Hey, how's it going? So right now I'll be talking about the Razer Blade 18. This is the 2024 model with QHD plus 300 hertz and a mini LED. So Razer's doing a, a whole bunch of firsts with this laptop. First is that screen I just mentioned, which is what this laptop has. And there's also a 4K 200 hertz panel, which should be coming out a little bit later on. I don't have that model. Apparently it got delayed until summer. That's what some people are saying on Reddit. So another first for Razer is it now has Thunderbolt 5. And man, I really wanted to get a Thunderbolt 5 dock to test for this video. I only found one that's available and it's out of stock and who knows when it'll be available. But when I get one, I'll come back to that. Anyway, so as always, let's start off with the build and the design. So, nothing new. Typical Razer build quality among the best in the business, as you just saw. There is a green logo, you can't change the color, and when it's off, you get this green color. It's also available in Mercury White, but it looks like that's only available in the RTX 4090 version, so that kind of sucks. At least that's what it seems like on Razer's website. But I digress. So really excellent build quality. I mean, the thing is though, Razer's not alone anymore with this amazing build quality. I'm just wrapping up my review on the Alienware M16 R2. And honestly, the build quality is similar, if not maybe a bit better feeling on the Alienware, which I am really surprised to say. It's full aluminum body. And also I've done a few videos on the G16 and the G14, which is new for 2024, and that has excellent build quality as well, too. Equal in some ways, the Razer Blade is better in some ways, but overall, they're too similar without me starting to split hairs and stuff, so... Build quality has always been good. So let's take a look at the back of the laptop. You're getting the same three fans as before. Still same aluminum that's made throughout. Ports are the same, except for that new Thunderbolt 5 port that I mentioned. And I, I like how Razer made some smart choices where one of the USB type C ports is on the right and on the left and same with the USB type A ports. You get one on the left or right. So if you're using a wired mouse, it's not in the way. HDMI is on the right, which to me, if they're gonna make a decision because there's no ports on the back, I get it. Just because this is a thinner laptop and it's performing as well as the big guys, that's a bit of a spoiler for performance. So since all the ports on the side, I guess it makes more sense to put the HDMI on the right because usually that's for TVs and, there's le and you're less likely to be using a mouse. But I do like that the RJ45 is on the left side. So, so when you're gaming on this laptop, whether you're a lefty or a righty, your mouse hand will not be interrupted. Really nice touch that honestly a lot of other laptop manufacturers don't even think about today. Okay, so now let's open up the lid. And as you can see, this supports Windows Hello and it works fast, faster than most other laptops that I've used in the past. So really happy about that. Keyboard layout, trackpad, nothing's changed since the Razer Blade 18's debut last year. Really excellent speakers to the side. I'll do a speaker test shortly. Keyboard is feels the same, just from going by memory. Not a bad keyboard. And after using some other keyboards this year, I feel like this one is one of the better ones. I wish there was a little bit more travel, but it's nice and springy. But I think that the ROG G16 2024 model has a better keyboard something to keep in mind but this trackpad is probably the best in the business really awesome to use glides well it's nice and large i have noticed though that when i was playing call of duty i did get some accidental taps when i'm using the wasd so easy fix for that you just press function and as you can see there's illumination of the different functions that you can do so r is for the refresh rate p is to change the different performance modes. since i'm on battery right now that won't work and then you also, and obviously you have your function buttons here, but anyway, function T disables the trackpad, trackpad disabled, and then trackpad enabled. Nice. So there's also a finger resistant coating that's here. It works better than previous razor blades, but it's still not perfect. You're still going to get fingerprints here and there, not as much as before, but they are easy to wipe off with a microfiber cloth compared to previous models. I don't know, I guess that's enough with the build. So quickly, I wanna talk about Razer Blade Synapse. I'm not gonna go into details. I did a full detail look in my Razer Blade 16 2024 video. I'll link that down below. But I will just quickly say though that Razer Blade Synapse is 
much improved than before. Everything is fast. The performance of the app doesn't hang up like it used to before. And I never have any issues opening it. So, okay, so since I mentioned the speakers, let's talk about that quickly. And especially since I recently had the G16 2024 model, and that arguably has the best sounding speakers of any gaming laptop. And I think in terms of overall clarity, it does. But this gets much louder at the expense of some distortion at the highest volumes. But overall, the surround sound effect is amazing. So here's just a little speaker test. So overall, it sounds really good. This particular track I've listened to a billion times because I filmed and edited this video for my friends. So I listened to the song again and again on the best audio equipment I have. So being able to compare that to how it sounds on this laptop, I really, I, I do believe like the MacBook still sounds better and the G16 sounds better. I don't think THX tuned this really more for music, but for games. So when you're gaming, there's like an incredible surround sound effect. And I mentioned this last year when I had the Razer Blade 18. When I'm playing Call of Duty or Overwatch or any game pretty much, the surround sound effect is crazy. Like when I was playing COD last night, I was able to detect people behind me, and left of me, in front of me. THX does a really good job positioning where the sound is coming from better than even the better than even the G16 so kudos there so now let's talk about thermals i did all my testing with the custom setting with everything set to a boost with an overclock on the CPU and thermals were not bad to be honest so the CPU hovers around the 90 to 97 mark it'll spike up to 100 that's normal but it seems like it's throttling when the CPU is already performing at like 95, 98%. So that throttling is not interrupting performance. And I can't wait to show you the performance section because I was blown away. But when you're gaming on your lap in that custom mode with everything boosted, because of these, because of the um, layout, when it's on your lap, you do choke the fans here and that causes a severe drop in the, or a, a severe increase in the temperatures, I should say. So... When I did that, the, C the GPU went up to like 84 degrees and the CPU was constantly throttling at 100%. I didn't lose too much performance, but the temperatures were starting to get a little bit too high for my comfort. So all I did was just switch down to balance mode and it leveled everything out. The GPU in balance mode never really wants to go over 150 watts and the CPU doesn't want to go over 45 watts, which is what's rated of the 4090 and the i9 14900HX, so I would say for most situations, you should just leave it in balance. But I did test all of my performance numbers in custom with that boost on the CPU, GPU, and with that one-click overclock. So might as well, let's just get right into it. So let's start off with everyone's favorite benchmark, Time Spy. In the top four, there is 2023 laptops. That's because we didn't get a hardware change this year. Even though Intel is saying that this is the 4900HX, it's performing identically to last year's models. So keep that in mind if you're looking out for some deals. I will say though that the CPU score is the highest I've ever seen by far. It had beat out my Titan 18 and this started to make me a little bit scared because I bought the Titan because I thought that would have the best performance out of any gaming laptop this year. So when I saw that, I, I retested my Titan to, just to make sure, and I was getting very similar scores. In fact, slightly lower scores, and I've upped it. Anyway, I'm not doing a video about the Titan today. I'll come back to that. But when I started testing some real games, so I didn't test a Titan yet for Call of Duty. I'll do that when I do the review of the Titan. But obviously, based off of Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, I'm getting the best scores because it's the best laptop I've tested since I've incorporated this new test into my gaming benchmark suite. 228 FPS was nice there, but man, when I lowered from extreme to the lowest preset, I got like anywhere between like 275 to 300 FPS plus, and oh man, gaming 
Call of Duty 300 hertz on this 18 inch laptop was surreal. It kind of gave me an unfair advantage. The response time was, to my, to my eyes, like near OLED level on this mini LED panel. And I know I'm not talking about the display section yet. I, I will get there. And before we had like 360 hertz panels on previous laptops with 1080p, but those CPUs couldn't really handle anything even close to 300 hertz. Now, with Intel's 13th and 14th generation chips, you're able to hit that. It was an excellent experience. Anyway, I'm jumping around all over the place. So, Cyberpunk. This is tested with DLSS quality with the overdrive settings. So this is the max settings you could possibly get in Cyberpunk. So with frame generation, you're getting 44 FPS. And on my Titan, I'm only getting 42 FPS. A two frame difference, but still, I was expecting the Titan to be the best. 4K unplayable, 26 FPS, 1440p, 50 FPS, and a 1080p, 73 FPS. The next game I want to look at is Horizon Zero Dawn. It's an older game, but I don't want to drop it yet because I'm not using DLSS or any type of RTX or anything like that. It's just good old fashioned rasterization. At 4K, it's beating up my Titan 18, which I'm really sad about. At 1440p, it's also beating up my Titan 18. And at 1080p, it's beating up my Titan 18. So I don't know what's going on here. I, re I retested my Titan in a few titles and a few other benchmarks so just to see, and these scores are what I'm getting. And then finally, a Shadow of the Tomb Raider. At 4K, I got 102 FPS, which is the best I've ever seen. 1440p, 179 versus 186, which was on the Titan. So the Titan did win there. And on 1080p, 216 on the Blade versus 218 on the Titan. So whatever, about the same. So, so now on to some more creative focused benchmarks. I know not everybody cares about that. But that's something that I'm increasingly caring about more and more. So I'll just blues, I'll just boost them quickly. So, so in Cinebench 2024, I'm getting a lead on the Titan 18 versus the Razor Blade 18. And then this is something I just started implementing is the Puget Bench for Premiere Pro. And overall, the Razor Blade beat the Titan 18, and that's when I really started thinking, man, I probably need to sell off my Titan and just stick with this. And there's still more I need to talk about, but just based off of everything that's happening here, this laptop is performing as good, if not better, than the gigantic Titan 18. This laptop weighs 6.15 pounds, and the Titan weighs like seven and a half pounds. So one thing that the Titan had going for it was that it had that it pushes a total of 275 watts of total TDP. The Razor Blade 18, from what I was able to test, only pushes 213 watts total. When I was playing Cyberpunk, because of dynamic boost, it allocates power to both the CPU and the GPU, and depending on what the computer thinks it should do, it'll allocate that 213 watts total between the CPU and the GPU. And the Titan, like I said, the Titan 18 does 275 watts, and as you can see, it's not making much of a difference. So it's either the Intel chips or the NVIDIA GPU doesn't need all that power. It, at that point, you're just wasting power because the chip is already being maxed out or Razer's making better decisions on how to allocate that power to give you better performance. Either way, thinner, lighter laptop. It's also quieter too than the Titan 18. Actually, overall fan noise wasn't loud at all. I had no problem with it. And if you play on balance mode, the speakers alone will completely drown out the, the fans. And just in case you're curious, the Razer Blade 16 had a total TDP from what I was able to test of 205 watts. Okay, so next I want to talk about this display. Everything is just moving towards the right direction for this Blade 18, and the display is no, no exception. So I know I've said this before, and I kind of feel like I've gotten in trouble for saying this, but I think... I'm going to say it again. I think this is the best display I've ever seen in a laptop. I prefer this over the OLED panels, because it's 300 hertz, there is no flicker. Just take a look at the Titan. That is a mess. And, and also look at my G9. So it makes for a much more comfortable viewing experience. And I did notice when I was gaming with my Titan 18, I did notice that I started to squint my eyes a little bit. I was blinking more than normal. My eyes were starting to tear up a little bit. And I was just thought, oh, it's a bright screen. That's why. And I do remember there being flicker with last year's Blade 16 with that 4K mini LED panel. And, and overall, this mini LED is fantastic. It does a really good job of 
balancing between bright highlights and darker shadows without really crushing anything. And there's over 2000 mini LED zones too. So all of those make a much bigger difference in terms of the overall performance of this panel. And in case you don't want local dimming, you can turn it off with one tap of a button. You do lose some perceived brightness when you turn on local dimming, but when I measured it, it measured the same. All right, so now let's just quickly talk about the measurements. Some people love them, but a lot of people seem to just fast forward through them. So I'll go through it quickly. 100% of sRGB, 100% of DCI-P3, that's what we expect. 91% of Adobe RGB, which is just good enough for photographers. Too. I did all of my tests with native because that doesn't clamp the colors towards a specific standard. So brightness I tested in multiple different ways. So minimum brightness is 4.8 nits, which is awesome. It's really nice that I'm, I'm able to view this laptop comfortably at nighttime. Max brightness was 621 nits, but hold on a second. It, it will get brighter. Contrast ratio was 1340 to one. That's because local dimming was off. With local dimming on, I got a perfect contrast ratio. Ignore those black levels. I, I think the mini LED algorithm wasn't reacting fast enough to my testing equipment. But with HDR on and local dimming on, I got over a thousand nits. And weird bug that I've noticed with HDR on and local dimming off, the, bright the brightness dropped down to 593 nits. So remember to put on local dimming when HDR is on. I think that might be a little bug that Razer might need to fix. Color accuracy had a delta E of 1.32. You want to be at two or under. So Great, really high marks for the display. And in terms of 4K versus QHD+, thankfully my Titan is 4K. So I did compare them side by side in games and it, with some YouTube videos in 4K, etc. And while I did notice an increased sharpness at 4K, like a decent amount at, at, four, at, at 18 inches, you can start to see the benefits of 4K. It wasn't that much though, not as much as I was expecting. And, and honestly, the increased frames I'm getting from QHD is much more perceivable than the increased sharpness of 4K. And I haven't really been able to see any ghosting on this panel. Also, there's no QHD 300 Hertz panel out there right now. And like I mentioned, man, when I was playing Call of Duty, it blew me away of how impressive that 300 Hertz panel was. So honestly, for gaming, without a doubt, I would prefer this over the 4K panel any day. I think when it comes to content creation, there could be an argument for 4K, but I think even QHD is more than appropriate for me at 18 inches. So you have a decision to make for between the QHD panel and the 4K panel if you go with this particular Razer Blade 18. That 4K panel is only advertised to be 400 nits and there's no local dimming. So that's why instantly I chose the QHD panel. One thing I want to mention about the 300 Hertz panel though, it's only available in the dedicated GPU. If you're running on Optimus, then you're limited to only 240 Hertz. So keep that in mind. So yeah, I don't know where to go from here. I may or may not do a follow-up video on this because I feel like I pretty much covered everything that I would typically cover. I mean, battery life I didn't talk about, but with the 4900HX, which demands like 30 watts to just do any basic task, means that you're only gonna get three to four hours of battery life. So, I don't know. Leave some comments if you want me to do some follow-up content on this. But yeah, all right, that's gonna do it for this one, guys. Thanks a lot. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.